Good morning. How are we this random day? <laughs> I felt like filming because I felt like it's been a long time since I have done any type of update with my life as well as with the whole postpartum anxiety situation. So I definitely want to talk about that. But before we get into that, I feel like I need some coffee. It is pretty late. It actually is 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm just like getting up. So before we start chit-chatting, let's make some coffee. Now it's so funny because I never thought I would be one of those people that needed coffee to start their day type of person. But it's definitely me now. I had to get some water. As you see, I love, 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 love my Keurig, I know people are going to disagree, but I just feel like you haven't had um, the newest Keurig that's out there. I definitely tried Nespresso, which I did film a video on that, which I am debating on if I want to post or not. If I do, it'll probably post randomly or whatnot, but I had got the Nespresso. I talked about it. I, I mocked it, that whole type of thing. So on to making coffee. I do have this uh, Smart Supreme K-Cup just as an update. This is what my little coffee area is looking like um, nothing truly special it has my favorite two coffees which is really one at this point and it is this one right here which is the if i can get it to focus maple pecan this is my favorite flavor right now go ahead and flip this up and get this coffee started if you have a cured missing just know that you're supposed to actually push down versus just popping it down just so you know and it's reading that I take French vanilla coffee cream and I add it to my frother there's a minimum lot I used to put it to the maximum but not anymore I kind of get almost to the minimum line and then I just add a splash of milks I feel like the milk help it helps with the frothiness then, then I add my two pumps of French vanilla. I got this little sauce bottle thing from uh, Ikea. And I just put my espresso shot thing in here. So I will add that to the frother. And that's what it looks like. And let's go ahead and get to spinning. By the way, I got these coffee mugs from the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree sells these beautiful coffee mugs and you just can't lose with these things. you can't have Nespresso type of quality coffee only with Nespresso. You can get it with Keurig too. You see that? That crema, that crema, that caramel that they be saying? It looks the same. You can't tell me. Now, I'm gonna put this up and let's talk. I almost forgot. My favorite part of one of my new, my newest projects is this thing, it might be kind of dirty looking. Excuse me, excuse the counter, we clean it. Let me throw that to the side. But to go with my coffee accessories, I got this little glass drainer and it's one of my favorite things. It helps out my life. Oops. Yeah. And that is good for the day. Whew. Y'all gonna have to bear with me because, first of all, this coffee is too good. I'm not even capping. I think, for some reason, this came out so good today. Also, I don't stir the cream. I just let it naturally fill inside. And by the time I usually get the bottom, it's enough creamer for me anyways. But, 
I kind of wanted to give you guys a life update. So if you do not know at this point, the girls are two and three years old. And now they're in a phase where they are in the rebellious stage. So the tantrums is definitely coming. The throwing stuff on the floor, which is so hard to deal with right now. Nala is going through the stage where she's falling on the floor when she doesn't want to do something. They are getting to the point to where they're getting really attached to their tablets. And that's kind of our fault. They have never been attached to the tablets. But because they be in school all day, we kind of let them come home and splurge on their tablets. Because they're at school all day. They don't get tablet time. And, you know, they're there for like 10 hours a day. They're there for a long time. Sometimes they're there from 7 to 6. So we just kind of let them get attached to their tablets. And usually rough about the time that they eat and have a little bit of outside time. We kind of let them start off the beginning of their nap, their relaxation time. So from like 7.30 to 8.30, we'll let them be on their tablets in their bed. Then we'll pull their tablets or whatever, and then they'll go to sleep. And then we'll wake up like 6 something, they'll get maybe about 20 minutes on the tablet. And then we'll let them eat with their tablets, which is a... Mm, I know it's not the best thing to do. Oh, by the way, if I sound nasally, because I am, I am coming down with a cold. Most of the stuff that I'm talking about is really Nala, to be honest. She's just going through horrible threes. Honestly, the juggling with that has been tough, overwhelming, but... You know, we know that it's a fade. They're not yet potty trained. We are getting better. We're finally getting to the point to where she's peeing in the potty when we take her. So, it's just a matter of time before she is potty trained. I think that's really everything to deal with the kids. Um, what I really want to talk about is me. Me as myself my anxiety my life update everything so last time i gave you guys a real life update i had quit my job and got a new job so i've been in my new job for almost i would say eight months and i was doing an overnight shift and now as of Three days ago, I am officially on day shift. So let's clap to that. I am getting adjusted. I work 12 hour shifts and it's really no different. I'm just doing the same thing on the same days, just at different times of the day. I switch shifts from night shift to day shift because obviously if you watch our couple's video, we were talking about how we think it'll be beneficial for me to go to day shift. An opportunity arise for me to go to day shift and I took it for one, that reason that David wanted me on days we thought it was more beneficial and two, I was legit sleeping on all my breaks, yo. Like, I was having a hard time, a very, very hard time adjusting to the night shift and it's crazy because i've mostly did night shift on most of my jobs i have never had any issues with doing an overnight shift but it started to get to the point to, to where it became really dangerous i was having troubles getting home i was driving like an hour away to come home and i would be sleepy on the road and based off of the location of where we live I was taking like a bunch of back roads to get home, which was there's no rest stops and no nowhere, no parking lots I can hide out in for a minute to get a quick rest when I was getting fatigued. So therefore I was sleeping a lot in my parking lot at my job. It was just a whole lot. So I came to day shift and I could foresee it being definitely better. <clears throat> It's going to take me a long time to fully get adjusted to day shift, but I can foresee it coming. Psychiatrists say that it will take you, as much, as long as you've been fatigued and restless, it will take you at least that long to adjust to a new schedule. I have to just keep my communication open with David to remind him that I'm still adjusting and it might take some time because when I was on that shift, I was fatigued a long time. But... The real basis of this conversation is an update on my anxiety. I have not given an update on my anxiety in a very long time. I have given two videos about my postpartum anxiety and haven't talked about it since. So I thought I should give an update on what happened because last time I spoken on this situation is that I was going to seek help about my anxiety and hope that it went away. So update as of today... I still have not gotten help for my postpartum anxiety. I know. 
I know, I know, I know. And you might be thinking that it might be over. So, technically, I haven't gotten help for my postpartum anxiety because I have had a phase of time that it wasn't, I wasn't battling it anymore. I will have episodes of anxiety, but it was becoming less and less frequent, which made me feel like I did not need help. At some point, I would say probably about four months ago, it started to return. I can't say why, but I'm definitely being triggered constantly. So if you don't know about postpartum anxiety, I would encourage you to look it up. It is extremely rare and it typically happens within the first two or three weeks of postpartum of you having your kid. Typically, if you have postpartum anxiety, it will last up to two weeks after having your kid. But um, in rare cases, it lasts way longer, such as me. Postpartum anxiety, I know, can come in different forms. For me, <clears throat> I will have visions of something possibly happening to my kid. Or I will have negative visions of something that happened to me that caused me to not be here for my kid. I will have different triggers. So, let's say, for example, there was like an episode of time where we had an alligator in our backyard. Now, I won't go outside much in my backyard because I always have a fear that the alligator will eat my kids. Even when I go to theme park, I don't like to ride the rides because it's been a lot of fatal with people getting on rides so I, I, I'll go to limited amount of rides because I fear like one of us got to be here for our kids so you can see how it's cumbersome to my life it affects my life it affects everything that I do in my life choices I don't really know why I hate that I have this type of anxiety I am not an anxious person prior to kids. This is something definitely I developed and never seen coming. Don't you dare get emotional. Don't you dare. Wow. Okay. Okay. Whew. I think I got it. Ooh, it almost caught me off. But I'm emotional and I'm sad about it because I know it, it affects my life and it affects my kids like especially when i'm not around them and i can't protect them i am okay when they go to daycare i don't have any worries or anything like that especially having cameras and stuff that i honestly don't check often the more stuff that i put in my mind and my head about negativity the more visions i have of stuff going wrong and I just stay away from like the news. I don't watch the news. I get all my news and everything like that from either pops up, pop ups from TikTok or from David. Especially, and this is kind of another life update, but I kind of mentioned in another video. But I am currently going through the stage of getting my CDL license. So I am looking up all things CDL, all things truck driving, all things whatever. Because I currently have my permit <clears throat> for CDL. I have my CDL permit. And next week, I will be my first time dri driving in the truck. So, with me looking up all things on YouTube with truck driving, now it's like I'm getting all this also negative things that pop up about fires, about accidents, and those are triggers. Now, honestly, those situations doesn't trigger me as much. But being that I have been in situations recently that was close call. As you can see, I'm still battling. I am, well, I've been battling since my first kid. So, I would say three years postpartum. I am still looking for help. I have seeked help. I have called people. I have never had an official meeting. So, it's not like I'm not being proactive because clearly I need help. It is affecting my life. It is affecting the stuff I put myself in. And it's sad. I don't want to affect it to the point to where as my kids are growing up, it affects what I allow them to do. One might think, oh, that's normal for a parent. For my level, no, it's not. And anybody who tries to normalize it, tell them. In the nicest way possible, they they don't know what they're talking about because people in health in general will make you feel like you're normal and you're over exaggerating. It's not really a big a deal. You know you. 
more than someone else knows you. No one can tell you about you more than you. If you know something's not right and you feel like something's not normal, it probably isn't. And if, if you're going to seek help and that person's making you feel like you're normal and you know something's not right, then you might should look for somebody else to talk to. But me, I know that I'm not okay and I'm not trying to make it seem like I am. I know that it's not healthy. I'm not healthy. My mental health isn't healthy. And especially people in the black community and I'm definitely speaking to you and I'm sick and tired of it because it's not just in this situation when it comes to anxiety even when it came to me being pregnant there are a lot of good people and there's a lot of bad and there's a lot of people who aren't acknowledged to be speaking on the things that they're speaking on so I just really want to give you guys my postpartum update if you have any questions comments concerns or advice please comment down below because we are in this together and I'm only here to support you but now that I cried my crocodile tears and updated you guys on everything that I believe I can update you guys on now I am going to try to fix this pantry because it's been a long time coming um I had ordered some parts on Home Depot the other day and I haven't been able to put up the shelf for a while and now it is time to finish this up let me show you guys what I'm talking about I'm hoping by this point you're able to have seen the pantry if you haven't I guess you get a glimpse today <laughs> but in my process of after completing my pantry journey this uh, wall wasn't done properly and it started to lean so i had to make stronger patches but i think i'm gonna maneuver this over some so that i can create maybe new holes so i can put the brackets here so essentially what i talk about is these brackets was starting to pull out of the wall this wall right here is concrete and this was drywall so this was way more simple than this i needed a concrete drill which i already had to make those holes but you know, it was just a lot. So, I am going to attempt to drill new holes and maybe patch this up. I can't paint these right now. I have to sand those down. But I can't paint them right now because I don't have the paint color. We can do that later at some point. But I need this bracket up. The two items that I'm going to be using and I'm going to be ghetto about this because I don't feel like fixing the camera again. Is this Tapcon drill bit. In order to drill inside of cement, you need uh, a drill bit made for cement. And then I got mason screws. Alright. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I had a glitch moment and I realized what the problem was. The problem is, is that this section of the wall... For some reason, it's really hollow. So, I need a deeper and longer screw than normal in order to drill into this part. So, that's the reason why. I had uh, bought these length of Tycons. That's clearly not long enough. So, I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer to be able to handle this because I'm not going out right now. It is 4 o'clock and... The traffic's gonna start piling up now. So I thought I was gonna be able to show you this portion, but it doesn't look like it's going to be possible. So if I do anything else, I will let you know. Whew, I'm winded like I'm pregnant, but I checked already and I'm not pregnant. Oh, speaking of pregnancy, might as well update you on that since what I thought was going to be going on isn't. But I'm not pregnant and I don't plan on being pregnant. So, But if nothing else comes up, I definitely appreciate you guys for watching. And I love you guys. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video or clip.